All right, so this is 6 kilowatts solar hybrid inverter from Seawater Energy. As you can see, we installed this inverter along with a 15 kilowatt lithium battery from Seawater Energy as well. The inverter and the battery are from the same brand and the communication is between the inverter and the battery is seamless. As you can see, there's a communication cable under the inverter on the BMS side on the BMS ports to the batteries CAN and RS485 ports over there. This battery came with a 35 mm cable, battery cable for connection between the inverter and the battery. Let me show you more things about this installation. First of all, let's go to the PV side. On the PV side, we have about 10 panels connected in series, 10 Jinko panels, each has an open circuit voltage of about 54 or 52 volts thereabouts. The voltage at maximum power has a VMP of about 47 and about 48 around that region, 48 volts. So we have the breakers, protective breakers, the source protecting devices, and the voltage protector for AC charging. Then there's a changeover switch. Then this we are on solar right now, so everything in this house is being powered by the solar panels and this inverter setup. Okay, at this point, let's check what the inverter is displaying at the moment. You can see from the screen, the PV voltage is about 473 volts. We have about 1.27 kilowatts of energy from the sun at the moment. On the inverter, we have 54.3 volts battery voltage. Then on the battery, we have 54.2 volts. It's a slight difference of 0 0.1 volts. That is flow charge, so it doesn't really matter. It's not significant. You can see that the battery is full already, 100% the SOC is full. Let's check the SOC on the inverter as well. Before the SOC, you can see that the wattage has increased to 2.3 kilowatts and uh, we have 454 volts. Now 454 volts, if you divide by, let's take an average of 450. If you divide by 10, you have 45 volts. It means on average, the panels, each panel connected in series is giving about 45 volts for each panel. Now something happened when the inverter was powering some lesser load. You can see that this symbol indicates the amount of load. So when this bar was on one bar, the voltage of the the, the voltage here increased to about 480 something. And that's close to the maximum voltage of the inverter that the inverter can take. If you check here you can see that the maximum voltage is 500 volts. When we connect systems like this, we try our best possible to make sure we don't get up to 500 volts. We lock around 420, 430, that's a safe region. This is the nominal voltage, 380 volt. This is the median voltage, median operating voltage that is safe for the inverter to work perfectly. Then this is the minimum solar voltage, is 5 volts. If we have it 5 volts or maybe two panels connected to this inverter, it can work. But it should not exceed 500 volts. Then Maximum solar current is 27 amps. The means can connect 12 panels, 6 in series, and parallel the two strings together to get. Because one panel, the current for one panel is about 13 amps, so you can get 26 amps. If you factor in losses, you might get around 11 or 10. Let's say 10 amps, so about 20 amps. We need a safe region of 27 amps. But I don't like to do parallel connection with solar hybrid inverters at first series connection. So let's check other parameters. So this battery amps, zero amps. Now this is the PV side. It means there's no current entering the battery from the PV. All the energy that is being produced at the moment is used to power the load. You can see, let me take you back. This 2.3 kilowatts, it's used to power the load. That means we are consuming the energy from the panels directly at the moment. All the lights turned on in this house can save you as bikes. We are consuming the energy directly from the solar panels because there's no current going to the battery from the TV. Zero amps. Okay. So this is the output. Percentage is 41%. 41% 41 is about 2.2 kilowatts. So it means the inverter is supplying about 2.2 kilowatts to the house. Then what is coming from the panels? Let's check. Let's check what is coming from the panels. have about 
so that's why the charging indicator it's down by the time this pv kilowatts exceeds what we are consuming at the moment you see that they come come on again and start charging the battery right now we are using from the battery although the battery is full but when whenever the energy from the sun increases then this charging indicator will come on and start to charge the battery on float charging or trickle charge so the battery is full but then we are consuming the battery right now because the pv is not just enough to supply the load and also charge the battery you get the points so that is it we have 1.79 kilowatts when the intensity of the sun goes up this one responds and goes up to you can see 47 volts it doesn't change around that range then uh, the 4.3 volts floats floats voltage then output 220 volts the frequency is 50 hertz 33 percent then this is the output in kva 2 kva 1.8 1.9 kva then the output in kilowatts 1.6 the bms zero amps okay then battery 100 percent so this battery percentage is determined by the communication bms communication called communication cable connected so when the battery drops it also reflects on the inverter the value on the inverter and the, on the battery is the same that's to show you that the communication is successful you can see we have lithium bms li bms on the inverter screen to indicate that the communication between the inverter and the battery is successful this is a cable right here black cable when you open the inverter there are two cables that come a gray cable and a black cable the black cable is used for the communication between the inverter and the battery okay so this time and date setting for those of you that want to monitor the energy consumption remotely i don't need that for now okay so that's pretty it for now that's pretty it for now let's go back to voltage and again very important when you connect these systems you need to make sure that the battery type is set at lithium battery so you press press and hold this button enter then i think the setting one is lithium battery lib so that's for that so this is the communication protocol one so this is the bulb charging plus charging then the port of voltage calculated in percentage at 10 percent the battery shut down this is the maximum charging power of the inverter 60 amps so the charging doesn't 60 amps both from pv and the grids then this charging current from the grid 30 amps because we don't want to consume so much from our energy meter when there's light so that's for that is for parallel connection and all that and all that. so i think that's all you need to know about this setup you can see that um, there is another solar inverter 6 kva 6 volt amps 1000 watts and uh, 48 volts 125 amps 230 volts ac that's the ac at pitch can also modify it to about 220 then 60 or 50 hertz depending on your region okay so this is ac charger mode default is 30 amps um ac input 230 volts or 220 volts the maximum amperage is 120 amps but the default is 30 so you can charge up to 120 amps using this inverter but that's a lot of power now to consume from your energy meter at speed is 230 volts okay so that's it for that that's it for that thank you very much for sticking around so this time please if you are new here make sure you click the subscribe button for more videos like this thank you very much i'll see you again bye